Hi everyone, this is Lou at Lightpoint Scientific and today I'm going to be showing you a few ways that I integrate uh, point clouds into my reconstruction analyses and hopefully that gives you some ideas for new ways to incorporate them in uh, your reconstructions. So uh, the first uh, program we're looking at here is Virtual Crash and we use Virtual Crash a lot when we're performing visibility analyses, uh, simulation analyses as well, but uh, specifically right now we are going to be talking about visibility analyses. Uh, so to perform a visibility uh, analysis here, we bring in a point cloud that is generally generated via a laser scanner, and then we'll also supplement that data with point clouds generated uh, from drones, which we're using PIX4D to create. Uh, on top of that, we'll have <clears throat> an ortho mosaic image, uh, kind of colorizing some of those point clouds and surfaces. And here specifically, we're gonna bring in a car so that we can simulate what the uh, view would have looked like from the driver of that vehicle uh, precipitating an event. Uh, so we'll make a, an entire tutorial to show this process in a little bit more detail down the line, but today I just wanted to show you the, what, what can be accomplished and just some, uh, some real basics of it. So here, if you, you click on the cam and then click assign to view, this camera was placed inside the, the cabin of the vehicle. Uh, in a position that's going to approximate the, the driver's head position. Um, so now we're inside the vehicle, we can see any visual obstructions that might be presented by the A-pillar, by the mirror. Uh, so especially if it's a pedestrian case or something here where they might be walking across the, the crosswalk, we can get an idea of, of when there might be a blind spot. Uh, in addition, of course, just in, in general, you get an idea of, of what uh, obstructions might be presented by these uh, light poles and uh, trees and whatnot. So. Uh, of course, you can use a mesh for something like this, which uh, I'm sure a lot of people are doing, uh, but I feel like there's, there's a chance that there's a little bit of uh, artistic create, uh, freedom taken by the, the creators of those uh, meshes, so something to just be careful of. Uh, for instance, so uh, this is actually a uh, Honda Civic model that was downloaded from Hum3D, uh, and I just download it to take a peek at how it might uh, vary from the point clouds. And this is something that, that we end up seeing a lot. So it's obviously a really beautiful model. It's really well done, but you never know exactly where they're getting the dimensions. So uh, let's come over to the front view. Uh, well, the right side view, I should say. Uh, in Rhino, it's my front view. And then we'll turn on the point cloud and turn it off. So I did, what I did is I took this mesh from Hum 3D, I brought it into Rhino, which is a 3D CAD program that we use a lot, and then I just scaled it so that the overall length was consistent with uh, what Expert Autostats says it, it should be. Um, that's uh, Corolla, but uh, the Honda Civic, so 15.16667 feet. So when I did that, and then I turned on the point cloud, and I tried to align them as best I could with uh, using the spoiler in the back, and then I rotated the mesh so that it aligned with the rocker panel of the point cloud. And when you do that, a lot of things look good, um, but as you start getting close and looking at some of the details, a lot of things aren't good. So for instance, if we look at the junction of the right side doors here, and we're looking at the pillars, you can see that they're actually a lot fatter according to the point cloud, and they're in a different position. So uh, these, of course, the point cloud is generated from real measurements, whereas uh, we don't know exactly where the measurements are coming from uh, for the mesh from Hum 3D. Uh, and that's obviously not a knock on Hum 3D. They're just, uh, I think it's peer, peer supplied um, modeling. So it just depends on who's creating the model and where they're getting their source measurements and what their methodology is. So if we come over to the side view mirror, we can see this is the mesh and then we'll turn on our point cloud. It's in a different position. It's of a different shape. Um, so there's some things that are just kind of created so that they'll be um, pretty and not necessarily super accurate. So same when we come to the front of the mesh, Obviously it looks really good, it's really clean, but we turn on the point cloud, we can see that there's uh, some difference in those measurements. So it depends on how detailed you need to be for your analyses, uh, whether or not that mesh is, is suitable for you, but there's some things that you gotta be careful when you are using those meshes, uh, meshes for uh, crush analysis or visibility analysis or anything where uh, small differences in, in the measurements might make, uh, make a difference to your uh, analysis and the results. Kind of looking at the wheel here, you can see there's a little bit of a difference between the modeled position and the real position as well. And uh, if we come over to the interior, the interior is uh, in the uh, 3D model from 
Hum 3D is, is substantially different than the point cloud. So let's just take a peek at the steering wheel inside from the mesh and then we'll turn on the point cloud and you can see that it's in a substantially different position. So something to be aware of if you are performing visibility analyses and the interior of the vehicle matters, the A pillar, the side view mirrors, things like that, uh, probably better off using a point cloud. And then when I'm doing crush analyses, I certainly like to use a point cloud as opposed to uh, a mesh. Okay, so some other uh, things that we do. Uh, ben Molnar from uh, Lightpoint Scientific it just created a really in-depth analysis, uh, I'm sorry, a tutorial showing how to use exemplar point clouds in surveillance analyses to figure out vehicle speed. Um, so I'm just going to touch on that real briefly. We'll talk about it more uh, before too long and then you'll have access to the entire tutorial that Ben created which is uh, I think it's about an hour and a half long so it goes into to great detail of, uh, with respect to how he he does that and what the process is. But here this is just one frame from a surveillance video and we bring in uh, here we brought in the point cloud from the environment we just go out to the environment uh, to the site uh, and shoot off some scans. Uh, here these scans were created with a Faro S350 and then we select some control points and uh, then, then we know where the camera is. We know its distortion characteristics. We know its focal length. Uh, and you can see here that the point cloud is overlaid. So I'm going to turn on and off the point cloud now and you can see that it's overlaid onto the surveillance video. And the goal here is to figure out what the position of uh, this blue sedan is. So once you do that for a couple frames and you know what its location is, then you can figure out its speed, of course. So uh, one thing that we've been doing now is reverse projection using those 3D point clouds. Um, so here I'm going to turn on the 3D point cloud that was um, aligned in Cloud Compare. Um, all right, so now that's on, I'm going to turn on visibility of point clouds. And then we can just use this slider here to adjust the transparency. So now it's, it's pretty much fully transparent. And then uh, when we wick up the opacity, you can see that it's aligns, it aligns really well with the pixels representing that, that blue sedan. So uh, here we're just going into Cloud Compare, moving the position of that 3D point cloud and then bringing it into PhotoModeler until that position aligns perfectly with the pixels in PhotoModeler and then we have uh, certainty that that's the position of the vehicle in that frame. So again, when you do that for a couple of different frames, then you know the vehicle speed. So we'll get into more detail on that. Uh, another question that I got uh, recently, or a question that I got was uh, from a few different people, was whether or not you could bring the exemplar point clouds from Lightpoint into Zone 3D, which is Pharaoh's program. Uh, and I was really happy to find out that, that you easily can. So uh, here's a quick look at uh, the Honda, that same Honda Civic point cloud. Uh, we just dropped it into uh, uh, Zone 3D. Of course, Zone 3D is really good at handling point clouds being from Faro. Uh, the colorization and everything came in immediately. So the format that uh, we're exporting from, from uh, well, that you'll get from the Lightpoint Exemplar database will plop right into Zone 3D. Uh, and then if you just create a symbol with that point cloud, and I'll show you how to do that in a, at a later date, uh, then, you can, then you can animate that point cloud. So. It's bogging my computer down a little bit here, but I just press play it and hopefully you can see that moving along smoothly on your screen. All right, I'm going to close that out because that is slowing my machine down and I don't want to waste any, any of your time. All right, so uh, another thing that we do uh, a lot is uh, crush, uh, crush analyses with point clouds. So. Uh, in a situation where you have uh, damage that you're trying to model, uh, well, it, that you're trying to measure so that you can figure out uh, the speeds of the vehicles that impact uh, or the delta V, uh, we'll bring in the point cloud in, uh, into Cloud Compare. And generally speaking, I don't have an exemplar for this one yet. This is, I think, a Chevy Equinox. But what I would do is I'd bring the damage model into Cloud Compare and then I would bring the exemplar into uh, Cloud Compare as well. And then there's a couple tools in here where you can align the point clouds. So there's uh, this tool right here, which is uh, if you hover your mouse over it, it says align two clouds by picking at least four equivalent point pairs. So you just select uh, a couple points, uh, well, three to four really is what it's looking for. And then you can add as many as you want to bolster that fit. Uh, just three mutual points or so uh, on the damage model and then the exemplar and then it'll just align the two clouds on top of each other. And then from there you can do more fine-tuned analyses uh, in an automated fashion in Cloud Compare. 
Uh, but to help with the, the crush analysis and kind of make it uh, more manageable and easy to deal with, I uh, will click on the point cloud and then I'll take a slice right at the height that I care about. So and when you have the exemplar in here as well, you can take a slice that comes out of both the exemplar and the damage model simultaneously. So I'll just give you a peek at uh, what that's going to look like. All right, so now that's just a slice and then we go down to the top view and we can see looking at the left side, that's about what it looked like before and now it's crushed in like this. So uh, again, if the exemplar was in here well, as well, we would take the slice at the same time and then we could put it up right against this damage profile and then we could export from here uh, into a CAD program. So that's generally what I do is I'll export the entire point cloud, but I'll also just export this slice and bring it into a point cloud uh, I'm sorry, a 3D CAD program like Rhino. And then I can just use the polyline tool to trace this damage. And then the polyline tool again to trace the exemplar profile. And then I can take my, uh, my measurements from there. So uh, it's, it's a really good way to be able to, to measure crush and you can do it very efficiently if you know some tips uh, and tricks like that. So uh, when I found this, this slice tool uh, made things a lot easier. And then I'll generally project that crush profile down onto a plane as well, just to make the uh, measure, taking the C measurements uh, a lot easier. Uh, all right, well, uh, I, I hope that that was, that was useful. If you have any things that you're using point clouds for that I didn't touch upon here, uh, drop me an email, shoot me an email, or put something into uh, the comments. I'd, I'd love to see or hear about it. Um, thanks, sir. Uh, thanks for checking it out, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.